and thus a new nation was born. A place the machines could call home. A place they could raise their descendants. And they christened the nation Zero One. Zero One prospered, and for a time, it was good. The civics of an empire really do determine its potential. In this video, I'm going to look at all of the civics available to machine intelligences and figure out where they rank against each other. This video was originally meant to come out for Cyber Monday, however, it has been a little delayed. Without any further ado, let's dive in and find out what's going on. And if you enjoy this video, please rank that like button. As ever, we're going to start right at the very bottom. Let's start with tier F. What have we got here? Okay, first things first, Warbots. Warbots are going to give plus 20% army damage and minus 20% army upkeep. That is okay, really not great, not fantastically useful. Given the position of ground combat in the game, this is a dead last for usefulness. Zero Waste Protocols is definitely one of the lower powered civics. This is going to give us minus 10% robot upkeep, which is going to equate to 0.1 energy reduction for all of our robots. That means every 10 robots, we're going to save one energy credit. Really not so useful. Um, even with a thousand robots, we're only saving 100 energy credits there with this taking up an entire civic slot. The final Civic in Tier F is Factory Overclocking. What does that give us? That gives us plus one leader level cap, plus 10% leader experience gain. Overall, and I've, I've talked about why leader experience gain uh, percentage modifiers isn't the most useful thing, that's mainly going to be useful in the lower levels for our leaders. And as we're a machine intelligence, our leaders are immortal. So the longer we uh, play, the longer our leaders last, the higher the experience level they will get, and the greater or the more diminishing the returns from this extra plus 10%. So factory overclocking, it's bad and it gets worse the longer you play. Now we've reached the C tier. These are not quite the worst of the worst, but they're still not very good either. The first civic is catalytic processing. That replaces our fabricator jobs with catalytic drone jobs. Catalytic drones are less efficient in terms of the resources to uh, production as regular fabricator jobs. And it requires you to make a whole bunch of food that you otherwise wouldn't need. This is really not so great for machine empires. It could possibly be pushed down to the F, but I can see some situations, for instance, with a ring world, where if you've got catalytic processing in the late game, you could have uh, ring worlds producing all the food and uh, turning those into all of the alloys. So niche, yes, it doesn't quite deserve F tier because of that niche use, but it's still not great. And then there is unitary cohesion. Plus 15% unity is kind of okay, although the problem is Unity is not one of the best resources in the game. It is not something we are desperate to rush, usually in the same way as something like research or alloys. All right, now we're getting to some civics that can be quite useful, though they have drawbacks. Welcome to the B tier. The first civic we're going to look at here is delegated functions. That gives minus 25% leader upkeep, plus one leader pool size, and plus one available envoy. Why do I think this deserves to be in the B tier? Well, plus one leader pool size is very, very useful when you are trying to roll leaders with specific traits, be they scientists that you need a specific uh, leader trait in order to get the technologies to come up, or if you are needing specific governors to have traits to increase, for instance, your science output, that can be very useful. And the plus one envoy is also helpful as well whilst the leader upkeep reduction is a minor benefit at best. OTA updates has just about sneaked into the B tier here, and I put it here as of the ability it has to bounce or combine with one of the other civics we're going to get to later. OTA updates waives the resettlement costs for drones. That does mean if you conquer other empires and they have biological pops there, let's say you are a rogue servitor or you're just a regular machine empire, you're still going to have to spend influence to resettle those pops, which is a pain, 
but it means that if you're moving out your drones to those worlds you've conquered, it is completely free from an influence perspective. And if you're conquering a lot of worlds, you'll need to migrate a lot of drones over there to maintain good, proper stability. The minus 20% Empire Sprawl from Pops is fine, not really much of a bonus to write home about though. Rock Breakers gives us plus one minerals on all of our mining drone workers or menial drones. That is useful. We're getting a plus 25% increase to the base output of miners, and that definitely puts this Civic right at the top end of B tier. However, overall, plus one extra mineral is not that important. Yes, we can reduce the number of pops we have working these mining jobs by about 20%. My main issue with this Civic is that it is really not a personal favourite of mine. If it was, maybe I would have squeezed it up into the A tier, but as it is, I'm going to keep it here in B. Static Research Analysis, that's quite a nice one. We're going to get plus one research alternatives and plus one code breaking. This is quite useful as extra research alternatives are going to allow us to specialise and get the technologies we need much, much faster. Welcome to the A tier, we are now getting to some of the best civics available to machine intelligences. First off we have Constructobots, that's going to give us minus 15% building and district cost and plus one building slots. This would have been an S tier slightly before patch 3.2 when we got two building slots, but losing that one extra building slot I think has definitely pushed this down into the A tier where it will find a very comfortable existence. That minus 15% building and district cost, in addition to the other building and district cost modifiers you can get your hands on, is actually very, very good. In a lot of ways, I think that may be more important than the extra building slots over the course of the game. However, Constructor Bots definitely does get worse the longer you play. The best technology in the game is engineering technology. We have our star-based technologies, we have a load of economic technologies, we've got our ship technologies, and an entire weapons branch or two down there. That means that introspective, this Civic, which gives us plus 20% engineering research speed, as well as plus one encryption, is very, very valuable, specifically to machine empires who are engineering based anyway. That plus 20% engineering research speed is really great. However, as the game goes on, it's going to become less and less useful as you research all your technologies and you get to repeatables. Maintenance Protocols is quite a helpful Civic for Machine Empires. You as a Machine Empire will have quite a lot of maintenance drone jobs and they will be producing the majority of your amenities on your planet to support your population. With Maintenance Protocols, instead of just getting amenities out of these maintenance drones, you also get some Unity, plus one Unity per maintenance drone. In the early game, that won't be so useful as you won't have many maintenance drones, but later on in the game when you've got hosts and armies of the things, this is going to be a very large and sizable chunk of Unity, and I really like this Civic. Maintenance Protocols, definitely an A tier. Finally, we have Memorialist. What is this one doing in the A tier and why do I think it's so good? Well, this allows you to construct Sanctuary of Repose buildings, which are going to boost the stability on your planet. As you don't have access to happiness as a machine empire, except for one edge case which we'll get to very soon, that means that Memorialist is one of the best and only ways that you have to increase the stability on your planet. More stability means more resource output, which means more efficient population. For that reason, I think Memorialist is definitely a great third pick as a Civic, though because it could also be used first off, it definitely fits in here in the A tier. All right, now we have got to the S tier. This tier is what I would say is the creme de la creme of your machine intelligence civics. And what have we got? Well, first off, we have the lord of the vanilla civics, and that is rapid replicators. Rapid replicators is going to give us a nice tidy plus 20% pop assembly speed. And as you know, in Stellaris, more pops equals more economy equals more winning. Therefore, rapid replicators deserves its position here. It is an almost an auto pick with any machine empire. 
The next three civics are all locked in if you choose them at the start of the game and you can't choose them once the game has started. I would probably recommend you grab one of these three and then take the rapid replicators along with it for a very strong machine build. The first of these three is the Determined Exterminator Civic. The first problem you'll have as a Determined Exterminator is that you can't engage in diplomacy with puny fleshy organics. That to some people is a problem, to others is an absolute benefit. You are still able to engage in diplomacy with other machine empires, you simply believe that all organic life should be wiped out. And you get a whole host of bonuses to help you achieve this. Plus 25% weapons damage, minus 15% ship cost, plus 33% naval capacity, and minus 30% star base influence cost. All very, very useful. Your home world will also start as a tomb world unless your origin is resource consolidation. And if you're running determined exterminators, resource consolidation is a very great pick for an origin. This empire is perfect if you simply want to go out and purge the galaxy of all sentient life. It pairs very nicely with becoming the crisis and generally speaking it can be quite a fun though diplomatically limiting option. Now we have the driven assimilators. Anyone that comes up against this civilization should know that resistance is futile. What do you get with this? Well you get a whole host of unique effects. You start the game with 10 non-robot cyborg pops replacing 10 of your robotic population. You do lose a replicator job, but you gain access to biological pop growth. In addition, you can assimilate any other organic life you come across and make it part of your collective. That is very, very powerful. It also gives you access to the Total War Cases belly, just like Determined Exterminator, allowing you to go on the rampage. However, it does not limit your diplomatic interactions, meaning you can still do things like become the custodian, all sorts of crazy nonsense. You will have some very tense relationships with any organic life forms you find around you, as they're not quite sure if you want to be their friends or if you want to add their biological and technological distinctiveness to your own. And finally, there is the Rogue Servitor Civic. What happens here? Well, you start with five biological population who will be mandatory pampering, and they are your five biotrophy pops. You get access to the Organic Sanctuary building, and you cannot construct regular unity producing buildings, and instead your organic non-hive minded pops which have the Biotrophy citizenship, they produce your unity for you, in addition to giving you some great bonuses to your complex drone output. As the game goes on, you will get access to more and more of these Biotrophies, further pushing up the output of your regular population, your machines. You also still get access to Ecumenopolis worlds. You can convert a Relic world into an Ecumenopolis, and on your Ecumenopolis, you could stack your bio trophies. You could have a, a lovely little trophy case, and that will give you crazy resource output bonuses to your main jobs there, which will be alloys and possibly a bit of science. And on ring worlds, you can do the same to get crazy science output. If you've ever wanted to play as the culture from the popular Ian M. Banks novels, this is the civic for you. And if you'd like to see more about how the Rogue Servitor Civic works and what you can do with it, click the video on screen now.